Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, the best apps in show from Macworld 2012. Yep, the Macworld news just keeps rolling in. Avid Studio is now an iPad, and it's not expensive at all. Apple is all over Enterprise. And notification, Serenity. All that plus movies, movies, movies on iPad Today. This episode of iPad Today is brought to you by Go to My PC. Take care of last minute requests from anywhere, right from your phone, with the Go to My PC app for iPhone. Visit gotomypc.com for your free 30 day trial with the promo code iPad. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30 day trial, go to netflix.com slash quit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to iPad Today. I'm joined by none other than M.G. Siegler today. You guys all know him because he's kind of like our go-to guest host whenever we can get him when Leo's out of town, which he is today. Yes. This Leo's is my in- fourth or fifth show? I don't I was trying to think of that on the way, on the drive think, up here. I think fourth. Maybe fourth? Yeah. Well, in any case, uh, thank you so much for joining us again. Sure. Uh, it's always nice to have you. Uh, the iPad Today audience loves you. And you know a thing or two about Apple, so it just seems like a pretty good fit. Yes. And I know you well enough to know that you spend a lot of time on your iPad, maybe as much as me. Yes. And that's hard to do. Yes. It's so, good so here we are, uh, week after Macworld. Uh, Leo and I were there last week. Hope all of you were able to catch the show. If you haven't, it's a fun show. We're walking around, talking to people. Check it out if you can. Uh, and and you weren't at Macworld. No, I didn't go. You know, unfortunately, I have a few different jobs at this point. And, yeah, uh, you do, you're busy. <laughs> I can't really uh, take time off from one thing if uh, if my main job is busy. So I was planning on going. I had a pass, but I didn't end up stopping by. But I heard it was actually really good. Uh, I heard that there was a lot of just uh, interest in an activity now that they're kind of more focusing on iOS than obviously they ever have been before, but now that that's like the main business that Apple's in, so it's interesting. Yeah, for the first time, it's now called Macworld slash iWorld. It sort of remains to be seen if they're going to make the full transition over or not. Um, Leo and I had both noted that the Mac application area of Macworld was sort of sad. It was kind of in a corner. Yeah, well... It, it, was, it was not even really a, a full row. And I mean, there was great stuff there. The, 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 the stuff on offer was not the sad part. It just, it seemed tucked away. Well, you got to think of the opportunity for iOS versus Mac. You know, iOS is hundreds of millions of devices out there. Now Mac is substantially smaller than that. So that's, that's just the way it is. It's great that uh, the community has been able to kind of, you know, move from what Macworld was traditionally. Of course, Apple was involved all those years. And since they moved away, everyone was kind of afraid that it would just slowly die, you know, mm-hmm. become a thing that, that no one really pays attention to. But now because there's such a huge developer community in the iOS ecosystem, they've really turned it into something that's interesting again. Yeah, it's, it's a very, it kind of has a, a little bit more of a homegrown feel. Even, even since last year, uh, I noticed that. And that's great because that's, I mean, that's what iOS developers not all of them, but many of them kind of fit that mold. They're yeah. creative people uh, who have skills, and they've got a whole new ecosystem to build upon. So Leo and I tried to cover as much as we could in about the hour and a half that we had uh, for Macworld uh, last year, and our final episode of, of iPad Today is even smaller. But there were definitely things we didn't have time to show you while we were there, but they're really, really cool. And in fact, Macworld will put out, once the show is over each year, their best in show. It's usually about... 10. It's not just apps, but apps and accessories and hardware and all sorts of stuff that they thought were the standouts. Are these, are these apps that are shown off for the first time ever at the show or just... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, shown off for the first time so at the show not, or became available for the first time during Macworld. I mean, I see the list. It's obviously not a rehash of like, you know, the best of the app store that Apple puts out at the end of, you know... No. Year, right? Well, no, because that would be a bit redundant to right. at the end of January... Uh, no, this is uh, this is this is Macworld stuff. So these are their picks, but it's cool stuff. Um, that is, I mean, if it had been released before, it was not in the form that it is in now. Yeah. So I, we can't go through all ten, but I will show off the four that I thought were the coolest. And it's funny. Uh, 
three out of the four are video related. So we'll just get into um, the first one, which is um, I Stop Motion Video. And this app is... Um, I'll, sh- I'll show you something that I put together. Yeah, this is groundbreaking stuff. This is uh, my, my beautiful... Um, my beautiful uh so this is uh my stop motion i'm not a claymation figure and so it looks a little bit silly but you get the idea of like the idea is is you you're taking still shots of something anything it could be legos it could be people it could be a sunrise sunset that sort of thing uh and yeah it comes in handy what it does it took me a while to figure it out um this is five dollars by the way so um it's a really really nice app but it is five dollars They've so actually got some... The screen shows, yeah, people are making professional stop-motion things with green screens in the background. Yeah. yeah. If, if Hey, if you are a claymation whiz, you absolutely 100% need this app. I know that most of the people watching this aren't, so I definitely want you to know that it's it's fun for everybody else, too. Uh, what's nice about it is, is if I were just to start a new video, right? So this is just a stupid thing I made with my front-facing camera last night. Oh, and by the way... The iPhone, you can have a remote camera running. So let me just open up my iPhone here and show you. I stop camera. The remote camera, if you're on the same Wi-Fi network on your iPad and your iPhone, you can use your iPhone. Um, if I go into a new video here, I'll show you how this works. Oop. Oop. Now, if I, I have a, a chance to choose my camera, I've got back camera and front camera, or I have Sarah Lane's iPhone now it's, it'll say, hey, can you accept here on the iPhone? And if I say, go ahead and accept, now what you see on my iPad is actually what I'm controlling with my iPhone, and that's just a better camera. So you actually have, hey, there, and you can, <laughs> you can adjust some stuff. Uh, so so if, if you have a camera, and you really wanted these cameras locked down because right. that's sort of the idea of stop motion. Right. So it's not as if you're going to be... Right, so you would want that mounted somewhere and you would just be shooting from that. Yeah, if you wanted to do the sunrise, for example, you know, maybe right. you've got like a gorilla pod... You've got your iPhone going. And at first, it took me a while to realize that I don't actually have to be um, uh, uh, clicking the shutter like every three seconds to make my stop motion. It's not really, it wasn't really that clear to me at first. In iStop Motion, you have uh, the opportunity to either control your shutter or choose a time lapse. So I could say, okay, well, if I'm doing the, you know, the sunrise, maybe I want only one shot every six minutes so you, know, you see you see the progression in time that sort of thing lot, uh, the possibilities are end, endless with an app like this what's nice is that the remote camera app is free so you really just pay the five dollars for the iPad app yeah, and this is sort deal. of where you'd want to be um, finessing afterwards rather than on your iPhone anyway so it makes makes perfect sense to me really cool app five bucks um, great for artistic folks cool yeah, the next app uh, is called Game Your Video, and MG has gotten a, a preview of the beautiful um, masterpiece that I made last night <laughs> um, of us uh, sitting around uh, the living room. Um, what what uh, Game Your Video does is it gives you all sorts of audio effects, visual effects, and sort of silly cartoonish effects to spice up video, and it's just it's sort of silly and fun. Yep. Uh, so I'll play I'll play this video. Um, did that's you come uh, up with VC Studios or did it just VC Studios was actually uh... <laughs> there's my cat Lucy she's really cute this is my uh, techno music track that I added it's MG on his iPad there's our Roku box and uh, and that's the end of the incredible movie but then you know we've, we've got our we've got our um our uh, our credits and then I for software. So there you go. So okay, that's that was very very. Actually, wait a second. I was just talking about the wrong thing. Game your video. This is video camera um, from so a company called I for software. Yeah. yeah yeah yeah. Okay, I got these mixed up. You're probably like, where were all the effects? That was sort of like. <laughs> there's not even what that you talked was about the at one all. With the, the silly sounds, the stupid sounds that you're gonna yes. play. Yes. Okay, so okay. I'm go- I'm going out of order here. Sorry. Video camera is made by a company called I4 Software. Yeah, this is what we're looking at here. This is this is eight bucks. So okay, I showed you something where it was like I picked a very very simple, um, a very very simple audio track, and that was actually something that came uh, bundled in the software itself. There's a few tracks that you can choose from, or you can pull from your own library. Um, it allows you to bring in those sort of like fun little cinema things where you give your 
your your movie a title, and then you can have like fun little who's so the producer. You can who's do some director? of that though with with iMovie right now for yes. uh, for iOS. So why? What's the big advantage of this one over iMovie? This is a little bit more. So what I just showed you, what I made, you watched me make that in right. about two minutes. Two seconds, yeah. I mean, from start to finish, including the movie, so was this about is two even more work. simple. Like you know, iMovie is you know, simplified for people you know who who want to make a, uh, a a nice looking video but don't want to use all the Final Cut or, or whatever tools. This yeah. is even more simplified than than iMovie is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. It, I don't want to say that this is like a really simple program that doesn't have a lot of features because it actually does. And it also has remote cam- camera functionality too. You can actually bring in up to, I believe it's eight camera inputs. Yeah. Eight, cam- eight yeah. remote cameras. I mean, if we had a bunch All of iPhones the same here. Wi-Fi network, just eight different That's right. IPhones that's right. Yeah, so that's eight cool. inputs. So you can make something that's pretty awesome, but it has these fun bills and whistles built in that just help people like me who, uh, you know, I'm not going to go ahead and make some, you know... Uh, Hollywood style video, but like With that was so te- easy. Techno porn music. Techno porn music, um, also extremely helpful as well. Yep. Uh, iForce Software has a bunch of different apps. I'm I'm just now becoming familiar with them. Video cameras, their latest. Uh, but they've got you know the flashlight app and mirror app and some racing apps and and uh, uh, the list goes on. They've got all sorts of stuff. Um, and then in your settings area, you have the choice between you know video quality. or You can go down in video quality a little bit. I always want to punch it up as much as possible. But uh, you know, if you have uh, storage concerns on your iPad, then you, you've got some you've got some options there. Mm-hmm. You can date and, and timestamp your videos, and I know for families that sort of stuff is just like they don't care if it's there; they'd rather have it than not. Yep. Sort of how some people like that on digital cameras, and uh, you can also choose to auto record on app launch. And you might think, I don't know. I mean, when is that really going to come in that handy? If you're trying to shoot something as quick as possible. Exactly. Obama's like driving by on the motorcade. Right. And you're, uh, you know, it's like that. So you don't have to push any things. button. You just launch the app and then it starts. That's right. That's exactly right. So you're recording right out of the gate. So that is video camera. Now, let's go to game your video, which um, I set, actually... You've set this one up quite a bit now. Haven't I? Yeah, now, now it you're better be good. You're super excited. Well, yeah. I think you guys might be slightly disappointed, but that's cool. Uh, let's go to one of my saved videos, which is here. Okay, this is good stuff. You guys, ready? <laughs> That's my sound effect number one. <laughs> Ooh, 3D beautiful audio effect, uh, audio visual effects, spinning maniacal laughter. Lots of people. So the idea is is that um, I have layered now a variety of. Uh, very uh, silly audio and video effects when when you put them all together the way that I have makes maybe the worst movie in the world but you get the idea you could have fun with this this just happens to be one of the videos that I have on my iPad so I used it really quickly actually the kissing is is sort of appropriate for this video because it's pretty racy Um, a mirror image and uh, there's a bunch of filters that's sort of the old timey effect so if you have, and by the way... But the app doesn't just add cats licking each other to everything. That is video. my video that oh, I imported. Okay. a real. For my camera roll. Okay. Yeah. So that, that that's my terrible video. Um, if you wanted to start a new video, um, what you can do is, I'll just go for my camera roll here, and I'll choose um, a different video. So let's say, uh, okay, that I wanted to start fooling around here. Um, wait, I gotta... <laughs> I shut up. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and game my video. I'm going to choose for my camera roll this video of Sam here. I just want to show you in real time how this works. Okay, so I'm playing my video, and what you do is you add flavor in real time. So if I want to add like an echo, ooh, so you see a little bit of the effects, so you just toggle on and off, <laughs> right? Oh, goodness gracious. A uh, bunch of different flavors here. Um, so you can do old look, 8 millimeter, um, Comedy, which is where you know some of that like silly like twangy sounds came from, and you're just sort of layering on top. And by the way, if you go through the entire <laughs> fail that sort of thing, if you go through the entire video, this is just a short video. You can keep layering audio and video effects on top of each other. Sometimes the vi- the you can't really do two video effects at a time, but uh, you can you can have some fun with it. Then you select a movie quality. Let's go medium. Uh, it goes ahead and 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 uh, processes it for you. Why can't you do high quality? <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. You only have a lower and medium uh, choice. Hard to say. Mm-hmm. Maybe because it knows that 
it was bad maybe quality in the first it, place. Yeah, maybe you shot it that way. Not sure. So then you play the movie and you can share it with people. There's some social elements to that too. And this one's only two bucks? It's two right? dollars. Yeah, that's a good deal. I think it's about, uh, I think that's priced just about right. <laughs> I like that one the most, I think. Do you? Uh, yeah, I would, I would buy that for two dollars. I would say the, the game your video with all the funny sound effects and stuff like that is probably the most fun. Again, I mean, I, I'm putting these, these things together completely yep. on the fly with no rhyme or reason, so they seem like a hodgepodge, but you could make a fun little superhero-y type video around the office at work. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Or even having, like, the the, the um, canned laughter. You know, that comes in handy. It's so very sitcom. Yep. Uh, finally, so you've got iStop Motion for iPad. Um, that's probably best for, you know, the artistic types. You want to do some sort of a time lapse, right? Uh, you've got uh, video camera which was sort of an iMovie competitor, yep. um, but had some sort of little fun uh, themes. Uh, George Clooney directed my movie. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but that was something I was able to add easily. And then Game Your Video, which is uh, sort of fun audiovisual uh, sound effects. And then finally, something called PDF Pen, which is not about video at all. It's about PDF annotation, which doesn't sound all that interesting, but it's actually something that people need on a regular basis and is really, really comes in handy. I actually had, um, it's almost uh, embarrassing. The other week, I had somebody send me something that was via PDF, right. via email, that I needed to sign and send back. Right, so normally you'd have to print that out and right. then rescan it and uh-huh. then send it back. Which is exactly what I did because I sat there thinking, I really don't want to like mail anything and... I, yeah, I just don't want to do that. I don't even own a stamp right now. Right. So I printed it out. I signed it. I scanned it back into the printer. Then I saved the images as JPEGs, and I yeah. sent it back to this guy. And he wrote back like, wow, okay, you should really look into some PDF apps just you know, for next time if right. you do this on a regular basis. I felt really stupid because I knew it was the, a really backward way to do it. Anyway, so PDF Pen is a way to be able to not just sign documents on the fly, but mark up PDFs. Some people work with PDFs a lot. Right. Uh, for example, okay, I've got this I've got this letter. If I go ahead and open it up, this is something that I, I put together before the show. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a signed document that uh, I want to sign and then send to you about cake. Well, I can't really sign it. Whoops. And then I, I choose my little pencil here and I go ahead. Yes, yeah, what I want to do. Sarah Lane, there you go, done. And then I can send, you know, via email. I can, I can, um, oops, I can, uh, I can, I can print. I can share. Uh, I have a, quite a few options here. Um, maybe more than any other program, which is why some of you might be like, why would I choose PDF Pen over Good Reader, let's say, or even something like Notability, which we've talked about on the show before. That's only right. ninety nine cents. Right. PDF Pen. What we're looking at now is ten bucks. Okay, so I and um, Good Reader, which is sort of a more robust program overall, but maybe not as nice looking, is $5. Is that right? Yes, it's five four ninety nine. So if you are somebody who uses Evernote a lot, or how much how much do you use Evernote on a regular basis? Because I don't, it's not in my daily routine. Right, not daily, but you know, a decent amount. I send stuff there. Yeah? Yeah. Because and we probably both you can think of a friend who's like oh Evernote right. I would die Some without Evernote use it for everything right? for everything it's like it's like your you know extension of your body then at least for now until Good Reader and and some of the other apps start bundling in Evernote um, this is the only program I know of uh, where I can go ahead and then just send uh, my PDF to Evernote but you do have a lot of options I mean you can send to a lot of different places. And, you know, it looks good. Also, it's worth mentioning that Smile Software, who is the maker of PDF Pen, um, has a pretty successful Mac app. And so I figure, listen, if you've already got that, and some of you at home might be like, yes, it's the best, then this is probably going to be a format that you're going to like because it's going to uh, look the same right. across a couple different platforms. Is this, uh, is this iPad only or is it for uh, iPhone too? Is it a universal app? Click That's on, a click good on the little link and question. See. Um, I will tell you. It would be a. It would yeah. It would be. It's only iPad. Okay, so yeah, iPad only. I was gonna say I don't really know how you could get this layout with the iPhone. It would certainly be different. Um, so anyway, this is uh, this is Smile Software's uh, entry into Notation. And by the way, I mean I, I showed a signature 
it can get a lot crazier than that. Um, you've got markup. Do a smiley face. <laughs> you could do a smiley face. Draw a rocket ship. Uh-huh. A gun. Yeah. Well, you can also um, bring in media really quickly. You know, if there's a picture. That, oh. uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that's something that you can do uh, in these other apps, too. But I want to make sure that people don't think, you know, it's just, it, it's, uh, this is just something to sign things. Also, they have something that I kind of can't figure out why I would need this. But sort of... Um, uh, what is that, gibberish? Well, it's not gibberish. It's I guess it's common proofing oh, syntax. Oh, right, right, right. For, yeah, yeah. yeah for all, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, you need style guide here, or, type, yeah, type stuff. Right. So, yeah. you know, if, if this applies to you, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I love this stuff. So this is all stuff that they just sort of bundle in to the product. It's a little bit uh, less of, like, arrowy object stuff, although that is there as as an option. It's just It's just more robust in general. So... That's PDF Pen. Um, cool. Those are at least the top four apps that I thought were the most interesting uh, that came out of Macworld. And um, we weren't able to show you on the floor. So if you felt like, well, is Macworld is sort of small. Did we really see everything? Totally didn't. Uh, you still haven't seen everything. But these are at least um, a few more fun programs that you can play around with. Video is a really big, big theme. Um, we actually have more video coming up a little bit later in the show. But first, want to uh, remind everybody that uh, we do record iPad today on Thursdays, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. It's really fun to watch live. Uh, you get to see all our mistakes. You get to chat in the chat room, give us feedback and all that stuff. But don't worry if you don't miss the show live because you can uh, catch every, every episode um, in our show archives. Twit.tv slash IPT is where you find all of our shows. And anything that we've talked about that we say, it'll be on our show notes you go to uh, any episode page um, at twit.tv slash IPT and just scroll down under the video that's embedded in every episode, uh, we have our show notes there as well. So, for example, Macworld's show notes, you scroll down a little bit, there's our video there, you can like things, you can share on Facebook, and that's all those, that, those are all the vendors and the people that we talk to, uh, which is really helpful. Um, uh, the, the, a lot of people watch our our, uh, our video, but some of you uh, are listening to audio while you're driving, and obviously you're not going to be able to write this stuff down. So remember those show notes because we do that for you, so it's easier for you to just enjoy the show and then go back and, and find those notes when we're done. And remember, if you have app ideas of your own, just shoot us an email at iPad Today at twit.tv. Want to quickly, before we get to some of that video stuff I was talking about, thank GoToMyPC. They're sponsoring this episode of iPad Today. So we were talking about being on our iPhones. MG, I know you do a lot of work remotely. I mean, yes. you're, you're kind of, whenever you're walking down the street, you're usually working yes. on your iPhone Send in some an way. Sending email or something. Sending yeah. email, checking in, what have you. So you're on the train, you're on public transportation, you're walking down the street, you're done with work, you've left your office for the day, the lights are out, you're going to go party with your friends, whatever. You are done. And you're checking your phone just to make sure all the T's are crossed and all of a sudden you realize, oh, somebody needs something that's on my computer back at the office. Or, oh, I've left on vacation, I'm in the back of somebody's car on the way to Tahoe and something's on my computer at home and I need it and I can't go back. Well, don't worry about it because with GoToMyPC, you can access anything that's on any computer from wherever you are via your iPhone. They have an iPad app as well. But hey, let's face it, we don't always have the iPad in our, back, our, in our backpack, but we almost always do have our iPhone with us. So it's like carrying your work computer in your pocket with you. Uh, you can take care of last minute requests. You can edit things. It's not just accessing documents and sending them to other people. You can edit spreadsheets. Uh, we have, use spreadsheets at Twit all the time, and I need to access those all the time. Uh, you can work on files, whatever. Um, you can also log into your Mac or your PC with the GoToMyPC app for iPad. So want to make sure that iPad users know that uh, they've got goodies for you too. Uh, more freedom, more power. That is the GoToMyPC uh, ticket. So here's the deal. We've got a special offer for anybody who watches iPad today because we like to do those things for you. Free for 30 days. You want to try it out? Visit gotomypc.com and just click the try it free button. That's all you got to do. Then enter the promo code iPad. Now, if you want the Go to My PC app, it's free in the App Store. Download the free Go to My PC app and you are good to go. Promo code iPad at gotomypc.com and we thank them for sponsoring this episode of iPad today. 
So, MG, how familiar are you with video editing? Um, a little bit. Yeah. I've done it before. I yeah. used to do it back in the day, uh, but I haven't played it. Yeah, way back in the day in college. Oh, yeah. I use uh, Final Cut. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, I don't use it too much anymore. I use iMovie every once in a while just to kind of try it out when a new version comes out. And uh, Final Cut, I've seen the, the newer version, the one that everyone was up in arms about, but uh, haven't played with it too much. Right. It's funny. We've been talking about, especially with Final Cut 10 that came out, and some of the legacy editors were like, what have you done with my stuff? Right. And we were sort of predicting that maybe this is Apple's way, somewhat clunky right now, of just bringing Final Cut closer to something that could run on right, iOS consumer, eventually. Consumer level. Exactly. Um, well, Avid, uh, which is a company that makes extremely, uh, uh, very, very high-level professional editing tools, video, um, audio, they make Pro Tools as well, um, but Avid uh, Studio is a very, very, very high-quality editing tool. Now, Final Cut has uh, really made a dent in the market for professional editors, right. but before Final Cut, everybody right. used Avid. Avid, and there are still and many, I many some editors. Some people now who with use, the kind of the hoopla around the new Final Cut, uh, Final Cut Pro are, are switching back to Avid or trying mm-hmm. to use it. Probably, maybe so. Now. Yeah, instead of ha- being stuck on Final Cut Seven forever. Well, good news for anybody who's like, yeah, I'm not a professional. I don't have thousands of dollars to build myself, you know, a crazy Avid rig. Avid Studio now is an iPad app, and it's exactly the same price as iMovie. Avid Studio is four ninety nine in the App Store, and it just launched today. Um, it is, as far as I can tell, about as close to iMovie as you can get on uh, the iPad. It's just mm-hmm. loading up. I was playing around with it a little bit this morning. I made a little video, you know, in, in two seconds. Let's see if I can load this up. Uh, my project that I just started. I kind of uh, what 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 it does is, you know, it's trying to make it as simple as possible. And with editing programs on the iPad, I always think it's pretty it seems obvious but it's like this is nothing like some sort of desktop experience that's where ipads just aren't even the same as even a macbook air at this time because you're doing a lot of dragging and dropping and the and the fine-tuning tools just aren't there but that's not really why you're doing this um if you want to drag something down um into your timeline you just pull it and you drag it let's say i want this at the end here there you go um if I wanted to just see what I've got so far, I added a little soundtrack earlier. Turn that down a little bit. It's like really loud. Um, and I don't know why these kittens are here. Oh, it's because I didn't start at the beginning. So yeah, it's like, uh, all right, so let's say I want to pause and let's say I want to you know, make a nice little slice here. This video is just way too long. We'll slice here. And now, uh, of course, when I do this, there you go. Uh, now I've got two video pieces instead of one uh you have some control uh you've got you've got uh resizing video properties Uh, you can you can play around with the color a little bit over here on the left hand side uh you've got uh some basic transitions pretty much you're just either uh dissolving or you're cutting Uh, but you can bring in media you can bring in videos or photos uh photos are helpful um it pulls from your library um, you can also airplay songs into uh, your your project if for whatever reason they're not stored locally on your iPad, which I think is pretty cool. I don't have a ton of music on here, but you get the idea. If you did, that would all be at your fingertips. And and then, of course, you can you know, add uh, titling and that sort of thing. Um, this program is, again, I mean, it, it, it looks like iMovie to me, but in the way that iMovie is... Um, not hugely robust on the iPad, but easy. Right. I mean, the, the Avid version is the same. I mean, I just added a dissolve in like seconds flat. Sometimes in Final Cut, uh, it's a, a lot more of a learning curve. Yeah, so the interesting things about these apps, like both this and, and iMovie, of course, and some of the ones that you were showing off earlier uh, that won the best in show at Macworld, it's like, you know, obviously these are never going to replace Avid or Final Cut Pro for a for a pro user who's trying to edit like actual video or even a movie, you know, mm-hmm. a feature film or something on this. But uh, I'm assuming that that these guys, the reason why they're doing, why Avid is doing something, even that helps, you know, what is basically a competitor in Apple who has, you know, competing software with Final mm-hmm. Cut. Uh, I think that they see so much bigger market potential for just people who want to edit something directly on an iOS device without having to deal with a, a computer whatsoever. 
And so this will this will become more and more of an issue going forward, I'm sure, as people shoot more video on both iPhones and, and potentially the iPad itself um, and just being able to do it as simple as possible. Because I know, like, when, uh, you know, well, I've said I've used some of those video editing software tools before. Uh, the reason I don't use them all the time is because they're just way too overbearing for most of the stuff that I would want to do. Right. And I imagine, like, you know, if you're if you're a parent trying to edit a video to put together to show grandparents or to show some kind of uh, something about your family, you would want to use something like this. And these tools are are simple enough now where it's interesting that you can use it all just doing a touch interface. I think that that's great. Yeah, I mean, you're watching me kind of flail around here. It's uh. There, there's always a learning curve on these sorts of things. And editing is tough, especially when you think you know how something's going to work and, and they've got their own little... Uh, so, yeah, that was, just, that was a video I imported. You saw me do it in real time. It was really easy. Um, editing can be... It's, it's the sort of thing where it's like... It's always going to be a little bit of a commitment. Right. Um, but something like this, because you have fewer options, is so much less of a commitment. If you just want to take the plunge and, and learn some stuff, or if you're a professional, imagine that you, like... Strand. I always use airports as an example because we fly too darn much. But for whatever reason, you're kind of stuck somewhere and you need to get started on a project. This would be such an easy way to just put down like a very simple like a A-roll. Loose, yeah. yeah, so you could edit it later. What's nice about Avid um, is that anything that you create on the Avid Studio version on iPad, you can export and then bring into your PC version. Oh, like your nice. actual, like if you are an editor and are actually going to work on this, it's almost your rough cut. You can truly uh, put together on your iPad. Maybe it's not going to be beautiful and final, but it could, it would be the same thing that you'd be doing later on. Is there any glaring thing that's missing from that? That feature that like you like to use? Either you know, obviously there's there's many things that aren't included that are on professional tools. But yeah. you know, is there something like that you were trying to do earlier that you were editing with and just couldn't get to? To, to be able to do something good. Well, I mean, again, the media I'm working with is pretty silly. You know, I've got. <laughs> a bunch of cat pictures and stuff that I imported and, you know, stupid stuff of myself. But, I mean, if we were if we were at Twit and we were trying to put together a show, I mean, there are a lot of elements that people don't even realize. It's like, we've got motion graphics. Right. So, you know, you don't see it in our live version, but after the show is over, you know, all of our, our product, lower thirds, we call them, animate on nice nicely. Um, and that's all HD stuff. And there would be no way that I would know of to import stuff like that. So again, this is this is a stripped down, stripped down video project. How fast does it do it though? I mean, like if you were exporting, if you made your whole project mm-hmm. and then you export, is it fast enough on the? Uh, uh, you know, obviously it's going to be faster on the iPad two than it is on the iPad one, right? But uh, is you know is it? Well, let's that's see. always a problem, right? With with uh, rendering video, sure, it takes a long time. So this was an extremely simple video. I got a couple transitions. I went seven twenty p, which is as high as I can go here. It's writing my movie. I'd probably be done in a couple minutes. Yeah. Uh, nothing crazy. Then again, if it was some sort of project like we do at Twit, right. it would be Could so much more hour. intensive. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's... it's it, Rendering takes a long time. Or it can, anyway, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, if you've got color correction and all that stuff, that's not something that you're going to do on Avid Studio for iPad. I'll go ahead and cancel out of here because I don't have time for this. But anyway, it is very cool. I think that it's nice for iMovie to have some competition. Exact same price point. Yeah, it's so, cool that Avid's doing that. Indeed. All right, moving on now to a little story. I uh, was in Bloomberg this week about how uh, Apple has invaded the workplace market. It's not just for consumers and schools anymore. Um, IDG uh, Connect uh, uh, put together a survey, and their findings, which doesn't really surprise me, but it's worth it's worth talking about. Fifty one percent of managers they don't exactly say when you know business managers, I guess overall with iPads say that they always use the device at work. Mm-hmm. 40% said they at least sometimes do. So, And then 79% use the iPad for business when outside the office. Now that, the last percentage doesn't surprise me no. too much. The, in, the in-office stuff, I mean, that doesn't. That personally doesn't surprise me that much. Uh, you know, I, obviously if we live in a, a bit of a, a tech uh, central place here in Silicon Valley more broadly... Um, but, you know, I go into a lot of different uh, offices of, of places for various meetings and stuff. And it's it's really pretty surprising how many uh, iPads you see that just replace things like uh, people used to come in with notepads or, of course, PCs. But it's almost like the iPad is viewed as something that's that's uh, kind of less insulting almost, you know, to have 
open and like sitting there uh, when you're in the middle of a meeting. And so, so many people now are using iPads. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they ha- they all have their preferred apps to do it. I-, I assume they're not all just using, you know, like the Notepad app that comes with uh, <laughs> with the iPad. I know I some people, not. some people, I was talking to a guy the other day, he loves, um, and he actually was talking about like, we were arguing about whether or not there should be a stylus. And, you know, there are some of those third party styluses, but he loves taking handwritten notes. And he's just like, and the screen's just not quite there enough where it's like precise because mm-hmm. he writes small. Yeah. You know, if you do like big looping uh, handwriting, then of course it's fine. But if you do, you know, kind of little chicken scratch writing, it's the iPad's not quite uh, quite ideal for that. And so uh, people are obviously using it for that. And some people even, that's why they want styluses because they want to just be able to, to straight up take notes like they would on a, a regular old yellow notepad. There was actually a stylus at Macworld, and of course, I can't remember the product name right now. We're going to try to get it in, at least to the show, or, or, we'll, or we'll review it on our, our new uh, gadget review show for Twit before you buy. But uh, it was re- it's, it's people say, anyway, I haven't had a chance to play around with it, that it's, it's about as precise as a stylus has been on an iPad thus far. Yeah. What about, okay, so the, the latest rumors, which you had actually predicted pretty accurately, if it ends up being true, the last time you were on the show about... A new iPad having LTE and oh, yeah, right. you know better battery life and possibly being you know slightly heavier to accommodate for that. Right. I mean, what, what's the latest in rumors? At least from the your camp, what you're hearing. The latest in rumors. I mean, uh, just what everyone is talking about is basically that of course uh, the I, the new iPad is going to be coming soon. Presumably called the iPad three, though who knows? You know, yeah. uh, Apple throws curveballs every once in a while with iPhone four S and iPhone three, sure, three GS and whatnot. Um, so, but let's presume it's called iPad three. And you know, there was talk today. Of course, I think uh, Jim Dalrymple from uh, the Loop uh, confirmed or put to rest some of the rumors that there was going to be an event in um, in February. That's not the case. It looks like. Uh, so we're now what? It's February third, right? So it's very February beginning of February, 2nd. but it looks like there's going to be no uh, no event whatsoever, no Apple event at all, uh, anytime in February. Because there was a report yesterday that there's going to be some kind of weird event uh, before the iPad event. The, no specifics beyond that, but there's going to be at least according to uh, Jim, and he's very good with his sources that there's going to be no uh, no Apple event at all in February, and that means, of course, no iPad event, which would put it in March, which would put iPad three at the earliest in. You know, two weeks after that, say, or a week after that in March and maybe into April. Well, because last year, I remember we were in Austin for South by Southwest when the iPad launched, when it hit stores. iPad 2, right. Yeah, the iPad 2. And, of course, we all had to get ones. We lined up in Austin and they had a little pop-up store and it was really fun. But two weeks back from that was still at the end of February because that was the not even the second week of March. Right. And, so if it's the same timetable... And two years ago, when they first launched the iPad, they announced it right in January, and then it went on sale, I think, and it did go on sale in April that mm-hmm. year, because you know, we were we were gone in Japan. But, That's uh, right. Um, yeah, so I, I I guess it's it's probably pretty safe to assume that you can expect it to be announced in March and maybe go on sale in April. That would be my best guess, but, you know, uh, it's definitely just not going to happen in February. We want an event in February. Nope. What are we going to talk about for a month? We uh, need the iPad 3. No, we don't. I, I actually love my iPad 2 so much. Uh, I am excited for what's to come, but yeah. I'll survive. The other thing the other thing that definitely points to it being on the later side, of course, of this quarter is uh, Apple had their earnings, you know, a few weeks ago. And during the, uh, the conference call, usually they, they don't obviously come out and explicitly say uh, that something, something big is coming, but they kind of give like hints along the lines of, you know, there will be a, a product transition coming into play in this next quarter. And they really didn't say anything like that for this current quarter, which is, uh, which is Apple's actually second quarter, even though it's the first quarter. They've, they're on their dif- different physical uh, time calendar. Mm-hmm. But um, So that makes you think that at the very least it's coming out at the end of this quarter, so it wouldn't have a real impact on the, the financials for, the, for this quarter that we're in right now. And it could even be the following quarter for that. Yeah, and then the other so there's <laughs> there's a lot of things mm. going on, you know, because Apple kind of uh, threw everyone for a loop uh, several months ago when they didn't do the iPhone announcement right, right. in the summer, and yes. instead they did it in the fall, and that was the first time it screwed up the financials. It did all this this weird stuff to, to although what the people, last quarter worked it worked right, out really well for them. It worked out perfectly because because of that. But so people are wondering now, like, so what does this mean for something like iOS six? Uh, uh-huh. Because I, iOS five and and was obviously announced at WWDC, but before that, those had previously been announced in the springtime. Basically, they had pre-announced, so 
developers could get a look at it early and kind of get their apps ready. Um, you know, so I wouldn't expect anything like iOS 6 until, again, WWDC probably this year. And I would assume that the iPad 3 will have nothing to do with iOS 6. It'll be some, you know, it'll be like iOS 5.1 or, right. or 5.2. Right, and eventually or, catch up. Yeah, uh, or, you know, they might do it at the same time. I don't know that they'll need to stagger it uh, necessarily. It depends, but uh, I, I would definitely imagine it'll be an iOS 5.x release, and it will have mm-hmm. certain features, um, you know, that are that are native to I, iPad 3. Maybe, you know, we'll see Siri uh, for iPad, and maybe we'll see, uh, you know, obviously we'll the double the double resolution graphics that everyone's talking about. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we're probably not going to hear too much in the next month or so. Darn it! Well, it's coming. Wait, okay, so re- really quickly, if someone says, "Should I wait?" my my answer is yes. Or, or yes, my yeah. answer is yes. Unless if you, you've waited this long, yeah. You should wait. Or, or you know, go out there and find a used one. You know, you could, uh, I'm sure you can find a, u- a decent uh, price on a used iPad 2, even at this point. They've been out for long enough, mm-hmm. certainly. I guess so. Uh, so if you absolutely needed to get one or wanted to get one for a family member, then yes. But I would wait. Yeah. I would wait, too. All right. So we're in agreement here. Time now for the iPad Star of the Week. And this is going to blow your socks off. Are you ready? I am about to prove to you that Leo Laporte is a psychic person. Now, let me set up this video because it might not make any sense to you what you're watching at first. Back in 1999, Leo worked at a company called ZDTV. It was before it was called Tech TV. I didn't even work there yet in 1999. Well, they were at Comdex. Remember when ZDTV used to go to Comdex? Boy, those were the days. They had a big live show. They had an audience. They had a stage there. Leo was talking to Jim Lauterbach, who was, who was showing off some prototypes of tablety type things, things that you were supposed to be carrying around in your kitchen and, and that sort of stuff. They all had styluses and you could do the email and this and that. And um, uh, John in uh, New Jersey sent this video to me. I'm just going gonna, gonna to let you watch it and, and, and see why I say that he's a psychic. How many of you would choose the PC? How many of you choose the uh, iPad or a pad-like device? He said iPad. That's, it, that's what I'm... But my point, exactly. I'm not sure the world is ready for these devices. It is, it's not a choice, Leo. Oh, you can it's have not both. a choice, folks. You've got a computer in the office, you've got this in the living room. How many All TVs right. do you own, Leo? Uh, one, Jim. Thank you, Jim. I don't believe you. All right, that's I all I need. That's true. Why, why would you even call it the iPad? Like, like there I don't was, know. There was no iPod at that point. There, no. Uh, this is 1999. Yeah, yeah. That's like almost 15 years ago. Right. That's crazy. I was very impressed. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's funny because there was one, one of these... One of these, he, Jim had like five of these things, and they all were just, you, know, you look at them now and you're like, oh my God, it's the worst ever. And none of them even had names like close to iPad. But he, Leo just came up with that. So somewhere, well. somehow, Steve Jobs was listening. And now you can thank Leo Laporte for the iPads that you have today. Nice. I enjoyed that very much. Um, I wanted to run that when he wasn't here because, oh, <laughs> can you imagine? I'd never hear the end of it. Uh, if Leo knew that he, <laughs> he had didn't predicted even remember that doing had. that. I, I assume because he's never brought it up. He's when... never brought it up. No, yeah, I'm sure he doesn't remember. Yeah. 1999 is a long time ago. Oh, they were young then. Uh, we got a video from Joe in Argentina um, who has kind of an interesting uh, security issue when using a projector. Happened to me the first time I connected my iPad 2 to a projector during a work meeting. I was showing an annotated PDF that I made with Goodreader when my iPad automatically locked. But uh, as you can see, when you try to unlock it, every number I press is shown on the screen. I know that the iPad duplicate the screen, but I think they should try to develop some work around for the lock screen. Or you have to remember to use the disable auto lock feature of each program, which uh, I find it a compromise whatsoever. Thanks and have a great 2012. Thanks, Joe. Uh, that's a good point. So he's worried because that people could see his password when he's unlocking it on the well, screen. Well, people could see what numbers he was pressing. Yeah. yeah. So the numbers themselves aren't coming across; right, they're just but little you can dots. See little, yeah. You can see what's being depressed. So if you were to I mean, it's obviously you can change your password at will, but if you didn't really realize this and you're showing off presentations regularly and somebody has access to your stuff, yes, then you wouldn't want anybody to know what your iPad password was and that would be really easy to, to, to see. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Maybe, you know, Apple should have some way that just automatically doesn't share the screen until after it's unlocked. 
until if you if you have a lock set, mm-hmm. it just knows not to project that through the the HDMI out or whatever until after you've unlocked the screen itself. Or at the very least, I mean, the reason that you were seeing those numbers kind of light up is because it's the touch. Right. When you're on when you're on the iPad, it's nice to make sure that you know right. you're, you're hitting you're, the right yeah, keys. Yeah, you're right. in a hurry or whatever. Yeah. Or but just they, don't show that. They yeah. could easily turn that off, and yeah. then you wouldn't see what anybody's what yeah, I anybody's think, I think it's at just, all. I think it's a simple enough th- suggestion, you know, to make to where if you don't have a lock on the iPad, then just show it always. Uh, you know, you can show the lock screen or whatever. If you do have one, then just wait till it's unlocked to start the yeah. HDMI out. Signal. Exactly, or just just keep in mind that these sorts of things can happen, and if you're using a projector regularly. You want to make sure that you know that people might be seeing your password if your iPad locks up on you. Uh, we also got a voicemail um, from, I don't know who it's from actually, uh, but he has a good app for people who like your food and travel shows. Greetings, Leo and Sarah. This is Chris Johnson. I came across an app that I think is just great and thought you might enjoy also. TV Food Maps. It maps or it shows you where uh, places that have been on TV are in relation to you. So if you saw something on diners, drivers, and diners, drive-ins, and dives, you could find the restaurant in your area or find where that show has been in your area. Same with, you know, man versus food or, uh, no reservations or a lot of the cooking shows. This is pretty cool. Um, I went ahead and loaded this up, and it's I'm I'm letting it geolocate me now, so it's showing me all sorts of stuff, stuff that, that was has on the been Food Network and f- yeah, it's it's like it's Food Network and Travel Channel. As far as I can tell, those are the only two channels that are that are represented here. Then again, those are where the majority of food and food shows are going to be. Right. I guess for at least people who you know Nick at Night, good food show, <laughs> yeah. good food shows Cupcake there. Wars. You know, it's a lot of these shows. I, I've, I've never even heard of, or I've heard of them, but I'm not watching them regularly. But every once in a while, it's kind of nice. This is a good idea. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good idea. Because you're not going to write down stuff. Yeah. This is all just for people who, you like the shows, we don't always take notes, and then you might actually be in one of these areas, and you can either locate yourself, like, what's near me that might have been on a show that I liked, or you can just choose a place on a map. So I might be like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll go to Sacramento one day, and I might want to visit uh, Jim Denny's Hamburger and... Chili. Well, it's probably the last place I'll go. But anyway, that's one of my that's one of my options. And um, then you have some a few settings there, uh, GPS stuff. And you can read about it. I like this app. Uh, it's totally free. What's it called? Uh, it is called TV Food Maps. And when you do a search for it, uh, use all one word because I did TV Food Maps and it couldn't find anything. So just one word. It's a free app. It's kind of just like if you like some of these shows on those networks. It's a great little companion app to have. You never know when it'll come in handy. Uh, there are a couple of reviews in the App Store that say that it's crashy. I have not had any problems with that, so at least in my experience. And they just updated the app, so they might have uh, they might have ironed out some kinks. It's fine. It works really well. So thank you so much, voicemailer, for your suggestion. And uh, while we get ready for our app caps, I want to quickly thank Netflix for sponsoring this episode of iPad Today. MG and I watch a lot of Netflix at home. We're actually going through Friday Night Lights right now on Netflix, uh, which is uh, one of the nicest things about Netflix is it's not just movies, but it's also TV shows. What? Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. <laughs> That's right. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? You're right Boy, we could do Friday Night Lights <laughs> references all day, but uh, oh, that show. But uh, no, it's really fun. And that's the nice thing about Netflix is like we didn't really have to make a big deal about starting a new series. We've got all these episodes now that are just instant streaming at our fingertips. We like Netflix through our Apple TV, but we could also go Roku. We could watch on our laptops, via our iPad apps, on our Xbox 360, PlayStation. The list goes on. You can watch Netflix pretty much any way you could you could ever possibly think to try The Walking Dead. MJ, you haven't even started The Walking Dead yet. I'm way ahead of you on that. You got that on Netflix now. Here's the deal. If you want a free trial, you want to see if Netflix is right for you, you want to watch some content for free, just sign up for a one-month free trial. If you've already gone through that and you like it, tell a friend. They'll appreciate it. Just uh, enter your information, and you've got Netflix streaming for free for 30 days. The URL is netflix.com slash twit so that they know 
We sent you, and we thank Netflix for sponsoring this episode of iPad Today. All right, MG. I think we're going to go a little country today because we did talk about Friday Night Lats and all, and Dillon, Texas is one of my favorite places. Is that a real place, by the way? Is that really a Dillon? No? It's a fictitious Texas town? Uh, yeah, it's because ba- it, it's based on the book, right? The Friday Night Lights book. And, oh, yes. Um, I think it was... Yeah, it's based on real things, but not real places and people. Well, uh, if I want to know more about Friday Night Lights, this is my app cap of the week. These are, of course, the two apps that we choose. One for me, one for MG, yep. uh, that we like. For whatever reason, we just like them. My app cap is IMDB. Now, you might say, IMDb. What is that? I've never heard of that. Right. Ooh. What is IMDb? Is this a new startup? It might be. No, IMDb has like been around forever. What I was going to say is you might say that's like one of the oldest dinosaurs on the internet. How could this be a cool iPad app? Um, this is not a brand new iPad app, although we've never talked about it on the show before, which is somewhat crazy. But the iPad app has been um, reimagined. Uh, if I want to look up Friday Night Lights, for example, ooh, that came up real nice. I just did a little search for it. Gives me information on the show, um, pictures, uh, the actors that are involved and what they're up to. Matt Saracen's one of my very favorites. Um, so I can see what else he's been in, that sort of thing. IMDb, if you're familiar with IMDb, none of this is going to be um, a huge 10, surprise. This looks 10,000 times better than, than, the than the website does. Yeah, It looks so good. Well, I, I think Amazon, totally agree Amazon with you. owns IMDb right now. I think I think they bought them several years ago. Yeah. I think that they're in charge. But uh, Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, uh, this looks so much better than that website, which is just basically a giant ad uh, at all points for some kind of movie, whoever's promoting. Well, look, you've got in your settings. You can fool around with your video quality because IMDb has video clips. Uh, you can... Um, ooh, what one of the nice things, actually, that's now included with their newest release... Um, let's go back to uh, let's go to the Avengers for example well no not the Avengers let's go to um, something I've seen Uh, uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks uh, Ghost Protocol yeah yeah I loved that movie that was so good Um, so if I all right, so I'm looking at through it and everything and I think well this was a great movie what did everybody else think now they have incorporated Metacritic into IMDB nice yeah now I know you love Metacritic yeah I like Metacritic I know it's it's sort of blasphemy to say but i like it more than rotten tomatoes just because i i want to weed out all those kind of user reviews and i just want the what the top critics in the country basically well you're think. not the only person or imdb wouldn't have bundled this in this is in the reviews and commentary section underneath if i go ahead and click on metascore then i've got nice quick links to let's say san francisco chronicle give it a 75 seems a little low for mission impossible but whatever um then that loads up and i can read I mean, it's out of 100 the it's not the best movie ever made this seems pretty fair <laughs> i liked it just right. tom cruise we'll running give it for 100, two hours 110 out of 100 i didn't like tom cruise that was a good movie uh so you get the idea yeah, IMDb, 75 is a good rating 75 is well some people give it 90 yeah, well, those people That's are almost insane. ridiculous. Yeah. That's a little bit insane. Right. You want to see Rooney Mara? She's the big, you know, hot ticket item right now in Hollywood. There's information for her. Oh, yeah, she was in the social network. She looked really different there. That's IMDb. It's completely free. That is a must-have app. You need this app. It looks so good. It is better than going to IMDb.com. So why did you just start using it? Or what? have you been using it for a while? Why, why talk about it now? Because what I do is before every show, I kind of scour the recently updated apps to uh, see they, what they is cool enough to talk about. Yeah. And I saw the Metacritic thing and I thought, that's cool. When did we last talk? We never talked about this before. So that's why it's my app cap. What's your app cap? So mine is directly related to this week, which is, you know, of course, Super Bowl week now. Uh, oh, Super yeah. Super Bowl is on Sunday. So, uh, I have the Super Bowl, what even, what number are we even on for the Super Bowl? It's Super Bowl 46. 46. Uh, Super Bowl guide. Um, so here's what this is. So this is pretty awesome. Um, the way that this is done, it's done, these maps are done by a, a company called Upnext. And, uh, basically it's like a more immersive, uh, Google Maps or, or Bing Maps or something like that. And this is the city of, let me get out of the way so you can see it fully. This is the city, my hat is, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. it. This is the city of Indianapolis, which is where the uh, which is where the Super Bowl is taking place this year. Oddly, I mean, you know, uh, usually it's a, the Super Bowl. Interesting choice, isn't it? It's, well, because they built a brand new stadium, uh, I see. Uh, and so, so when they did that, you know, they want to promote it. Yeah, these guys now uh, have. So here's the actual stadium itself. 
You can zoom in. It's Lucas Oil Stadium. You can zoom in far enough to actually see Giants versus Patriots on wow. the little end zone thing. And you can, you know, pan all around. You can do this to get a different angle. Like, you can see what it looks like from uh, from the East Gate here. I mean, this is helpful for me. I mean, I'm obviously not going to Indianapolis this weekend, but well, I can kind is, of feel like I'm there. Well, this is just a cool little novelty thing. But, you know, the, this is actually, a, this would be a very useful app if you happen to be going to the game, which, you mm-hmm. know, presumably 80-some thousand people are doing it. Probably no one watching this show, I would imagine, though. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat room. Someone uh, might get might have been lucky enough to e- snag some tickets. Yes, yeah, obviously it's very hard to get a ticket. But if you happen to be going, this has all kinds of things in it, right? That you would want. It's got you know you can basically pin down your location to anywhere you are uh, in Indianapolis. Get the stadium. Get seat locators in the actual stadium itself. Find parking. You can get all the best driving routes. You can see here it kind of shows you uh, all the different areas and ways to get to the stadium and what's what's congested and what's not. Of course, eating, drinking around the stadium, shopping, uh, sleeping is you know for hotels and whatnot. And then they also have this little area up here where you can tap to watch the Super Bowl live. This only works if you have Verizon Wireless. As far as I know, Verizon Wireless has an exclusive deal to basically be streaming uh, the Super Bowl live to mobile devices right. uh, if you're a customer. So that works uh, if you happen to have a, uh, I assume it would work if you had a Verizon Wireless for your iPad. Mm-hmm. And you could load it right there and watch it. Um, but otherwise, you know, what, what I like about this is, first of all, it's just, you know, kind of a neat way to see Indianapolis and see where the, where the Super Bowl is being held and what's going on around there during that time. But it's also, if you, you know, went to sporting events when you were younger and continue to go to them now, but especially, you know, like in the 80s and 90s, they used to try and sell you these program guides, these guides for every single basically sporting event. And they were such a ripoff. It was like, you know, 20 some dollars or whatever. And, yeah. uh, you got like you know nice pictures of the players, and you got a rundown of the roster and yeah. whatever. It was kind of it was more of a keepsake than, than well, actually. Well, people being probably useful. bought them because you're like it's a ripoff, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, this is this is actually very useful, and uh, you know you can just just go and download it. Um, uh, what is it called exactly? It is called <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Super Bowl Forty Six. It is called Super Bowl Forty Six Guide. Forty Six Guide. And yeah. how much is it? I believe it is free. See, the interesting thing about it is. I actually didn't have to buy it or download it right now because I had the Super Bowl 45 guide. And the nice thing is they just updated it right to the Super Bowl 46 guide. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so I saw like this update coming in and I'm like, what? They're doing an app, uh, an update to uh, an app that's a year old, but it was because they were updating it newly for this year. So, yeah. So I guess the only way that that would suck is if you, for whatever reason, wanted to keep all that 45 data. Yeah. I but mean, if, yeah. It, it, I, I, li- I like the idea that it would just update it is, it's a free app. automatically. Uh, cool. Yeah, it's a totally free app uh, for iPad only. But yeah, it's a really nice way if you happen to be going to the game or if you just want to check out you just Indi- live downtown Indianapolis, which everyone does, obviously. Uh, so. Hey, I do- I've never been there. Yeah. There's probably a lot of cool I, restaurants I, I and bars. I think you're amongst many people who have never been there. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone in this room been to Indianapolis? Why don't people go there more? I think we should go. I don't like not knowing how cities are. It's probably really cool there. If you guys know anything about Indianapolis, will you send it to iPad Today at twit.tv? In fact, send all of your suggestions for the show Someone and comments. in the chat room says downtown Indy isn't very nice. Oh, well, <laughs> Linton, you don't know. You're just trying to lead us astray. You just don't want us to go to the Super Bowl. We're going to go. Uh, no, but but seriously. Um, Someone says they live there and not, love it. See? Yeah. Indianapolis. Of course. Of course. People, if it wasn't wonderful, people wouldn't live there. Um, Peyton Manning doesn't like it too much right now. I don't think he's getting getting run out of town. Well, that's him. Yeah. You know, he's. I think Peyton Manning's going to be okay. Uh, as Super Bowl aside, uh, please do write us iPad at twit.tv. We love your app tips. We love your duh tips. Uh, we had to cut one out of the show today. I'm very sorry about that. We'll use it tomorrow. We ran out of time. We love your videos, your voicemails, all that good stuff. Uh, reminder that 757-504-IPAD is our Google voice number to send us a voicemail. Try to keep it to 30 seconds or less. And send us all the videos that you can muster because uh, we'd love to see your face. And thanks again to the great gentleman who sent me the Leo Laporte psychic iPad video. Um, I haven't uh, been more impressed by anything in a while. If I, I thought Leo couldn't get any smarter. Apparently now uh, he can predict the future. On the stage, iPad. We've got to take him to Vegas, man. We've got to get rich. Uh, thank you so much to M.G. Siegler for joining me once again on the show. Of course. Let people know where they can find you online and what you're up to these days. You know, Twitter. 
Facebook. What's your whatever. Twitter handle? Oh, it's uh, Paris Lemon. Paris Lemon. ParisLemon.com also. Com, you do yeah. a lot of writing there too. Writing also on TechCrunch and then Pando Daily, Sarah Lacey's new site, which we're investors in. So, which is right, another yep. sort of a, a, a tech, new technology tech, blog. Yep. Tech news related blog. Yep. Uh, doing good work. Uh, yeah, so you're a busy dude. We yes. uh, appreciate you taking the time to be here. Leo will be back next week. Um, watch him on Live with Kelly. I guess that'll run tomorrow. Um, if, you, uh, if you're if you not watching this after the fact, if you're watching it live. Uh, but he'll be here uh, next week and we'll get start getting back to normal again after a few crazy weeks on the road. Thanks to everybody for watching and we'll see you next week on iPad Today.